Hello, good evening again, everybody, and apologies for the early start. I normally really believe in the power of punctuality, but I was obviously early. So thank you again to Liam's family <laughs> for letting me know uh, that we started too early. Um, so welcome, everybody, um, to this um, uh, information session. And what we want to do for you is we want to just run through um, the processes that we're using as a school to um, operate the teacher assessed grades process. So uh, we refer to it in school as TAGS. Um, you might have heard your um, children using that, um, but basically that's the language that the government um, have chosen, uh, teacher assessed grades. So mm. before we kick off and tell you sort of how we're doing it, um, so that you can hopefully be very confident that we have it in hand, um, can I just remind you, you can have your cameras on, it's fine. Um, I know a lot of you don't uh, like to, um, but please feel free to. Please keep your microphones off so there's no interference. Um, if you've got any questions, please raise them in the chat um, or any comments, um, and we'll try and answer those at the end. And there might be an opportunity um, for any um, questions if people want to raise those verbally at the end. Um, I know a lot of um, uh, people are watching this uh, recorded um, because they prefer to have the... Um, capacity to do that. And if you want to listen to it again, um, not that it'll be that exciting, but if you just want to run through it with your children or you want any clarification, um, this will be uh, up on the website and we'll send you the parent mail link um, to that tomorrow as well. So you can re-go through it um, if you want clarity. Okay, so just so that you know, because it seems like a long time since we've seen any of you, um, who the sort of key people involved in this process are, um, you've got myself obviously as and my role um, in this is basically the dubious uh, pleasure of being the person that signs off all the grades that we submit into the system. Um, it's the head of the centre that has to do that. So I have to be absolutely 100% clear and confident that every teacher and every head of department has followed a very robust process that gives every pupil the opportunity to show what they are capable of in these bizarre circumstances, and also that it is equitable and fair to every pupil in the school. And hopefully by the end of this presentation, you will have the same confidence um, that we know what we're doing um, and that however much everybody's a little bit in the dark about this, um, that you have the confidence that we are in control. So that's why I am a, a key person um, here. Uh, you've then got um, uh, Ms. Tobiah and Ms. Argirakis, who are both assistant heads, and they are part of what we call the Narrowing the Gap team. So their focus is basically on progress of children from the, the moment they come into the school um, until they leave. Laura, um, Ms. Tobiah, particularly focused on the sixth form, and Miriam, Ms. Argirakis, um, particularly focused on Key Stage 3 and 4. And then you have two very important people who are the heads of year. So Miss Key Rose, head of year 11, and Miss Lewis, um, head of year 12 and 13. Um, so all of these people are here to help you and to support your children um, through the process. And you can contact any of us at any time um, in order to um, have those discussions with us. So in terms of um, your reading, um, again, this will be up on the website tomorrow, so you can follow the link. I'll put the PowerPoint up as well, so you can just click, click directly on that link. Um, if you have nothing better to do with your life, you can read the JCQ guidance on the determination of the grades. Um, you really don't need to because I have spent an awful lot of time reading that, um, as our teachers in school. Um, and so, you know, there's a lot of detail in there. But essentially, if you're really interested in the mechanisms of this process, please feel free to read it. The other document that will be on the website from tomorrow is the Heathcote School specific policy that I have to upload to um, the General um, Joint Centre for Qualifications, the JCQ, um, by the 30th of April. And basically it sets out how we're going to do it at Heathcote um, and they will hopefully sign that off to say that they support um, the way that we're doing it. Um, and they put out a template model. So ours is obviously very, very similar to theirs. It's just been Heathcoterized to make it personal to our school. So before we talk about um, the process, uh, you should have received a report for your child today. And I'm just going to hand over to Miss Argirakis, who's going to talk you through how that report works. Um, it's an example of a year 11 report, but I do understand that there are year 13s 
here as well and it works in the same way. I do just give, need to give you a word of warning um, and Miss Argirakis will talk a bit more about this is you will not get a predicted grade for your child at any point between now um, and the release of the results um, in August because obviously we, we just can't do that. Um, it wouldn't be fair um, and at the moment because we are evidence collecting this term. It wouldn't be an accurate judgment anyway, but we do understand that you do really want some feedback about how your child is getting on. So I'm just going to hand over to Ms. Argirakis, who's just going to talk you through that report uh, briefly. Hello, good evening, everybody. Um, nice to see you again, although I can't see all of you, um, and I hope you're all well. Um, I'm just going to talk you through the report that will have gone out today for Year 11 and 13 pupils. If you haven't seen it already, it does look rather different to the report you <coughs> usually get. And there are various reasons for that, which I'm going to talk to you about now. Um, Emma's just alluded to this, but we are not going to be giving out um, predicted grades because we haven't got predicted grades to give you. Over the coming weeks, over the next few weeks, we continue to collect evidence which will support teachers in working towards finalising your son or daughter's final teacher assessed grade. We're obviously not prepared to give out that grades that aren't credible. Um, we don't want pupils to be under any undue stress. And um, we feel that it's really important that on this occasion, we're reporting to you about attitude to learning, engagement in class, and whether or not pupils are on track to meet their target grades. So if you haven't seen the report already, you can see it now in front of you on the screen. We're using a ragging system on this occasion. So for each subject, your son or daughter will achieve a green, amber or red under the um, four criteria of engagement in remote learning, engagement in class, submission of work, and whether or not they're on track to meet their target grades. I hope, I'm hoping the report is very, very self-explanatory. There's an explanation for all of those criteria underneath the report. And you are able on this occasion to contact um, heads of departments directly. We've added the information, the email addresses for heads of departments. So if you have any concerns to cut out going through heads of years, you can contact heads of departments to talk through concerns um, where there are any on the report, if it's amber or red, and you want to find out a little bit more information. Um, and that's a new thing, a new feature. Normally, there's only the heads of years contact details on the report. So I'm hoping you'll um, be able to take a look at those reports over the coming days. And please do get in touch with me if you've got any questions around the reports, or if you've got any questions tonight, feel free to to put them on the chat and we'll come back to them at the end. Thank you. Hi, back to me again. So um, I hope that's clear and you found those documents um, useful. So just moving on um, to what we um, really need from you um, over the next few weeks, and I'll talk you through the timeline in the moment, is attendance every day at school and an intervention. Both year 11 and 13 have been amazing um, since coming back and actually attendance is really, really good. Um, but that includes punctuality as well. So making sure that there's no learning missed from the moment they get into school. So, um, you know, that's going pretty well. Um, but obviously we're only just back to school and that needs to be maintained all the way through to half term because if they're not in school, they don't have the opportunity to provide the evidence that they need to provide um, in, in order to show us what they're capable of. Um, Dialogue between your child and teachers. It's really important that um, both year 11 and 13 take ownership of the process. If they don't understand, they need to ask. Um, if they feel, you know, they haven't done as well on an assessment as perhaps they could have done, you know, they need to talk to the teacher about what that means when they might have another opportunity to show, um, you know, what they're capable of. So, you know, we can't be there, you know, the staff that I've shown you at the beginning, we can't be in there in every classroom in every situation it's really important that your child takes ownership and kind of you know leads that process where they're feeling unsure uh talk about the reports so it's really important please particularly where there are red and ambers um that you have that dialogue with your child um that you contact um the school if you need to but you've got to be clear that we can't get into discussion um with you at any point about grades so, you know, if you want to ring up and say, is my child going to get a five or my child should be working a seven, you are going to give my child a seven, aren't you? It's just a, it's just a no. Um, you know, we're not allowed by the JCQ regulations, any of us to get into any dialogue with you about grades. So please contact teachers to talk about, you know, what your child can do differently or how you can support them 
or you know bits that they're struggling with um feel free to do that um, but as i say we can't get into discussion about individual grades um keep checking google classroom that is now the medium for you know all homework um all uh, setting of assessments so keep um going into i know that's difficult my daughter's school uses teams um you know, I'm forever forgetting to go on and have a look and then realising she's got homework at the last minute. Please try and take ownership of that. Um, you know, year 11 and 13 are extremely important. So, you know, log in with them, make sure you've got their details to log in, which you obviously all do have because you're at this meeting. So well done. Put them on the fridge or something and make sure that you're constantly checking and checking with them. Um, finding solutions. Um, so, for example, we had an incident in year 13 the other day when a, a child had a planned assessment in class. Um, but they had a university um, open day to attend um, and actually, you know, they, they felt a bit stressed about that. Actually, it's just a case of that um, student needed to go and speak to uh, the teacher and say, actually, look, I really want to go to this university open day. Is there another opportunity for me to take that assessment? So, again, let's talk about things and find solutions, um, you know, rather than, than not. Um, a plan for revision and work every evening. I mean, between now and half term, and you'll see on the timeline in a moment, there are going to be a significant number of assessments. Many of these are short. Um, many of these might be 20 minute exam questions in lessons. And until the end of the process, the teachers don't necessarily know which of those they will finally submit um, as the evidence. At the moment, we're still waiting for clarity about how many pieces of evidence schools have to submit. We don't know the answer to that yet, um, but there will be regular tests and assessments. Um, pupils will be informed about them. They will be on Google Classroom. And again, it's making sure that your child has, you know, two hours a night, it's possibly more at A-level, where they have a space where they can work, um, you know, they have that support from you and that they are keeping on top of the things they need to do been a really difficult year and you really need to support them with that if you're struggling with that you know if you've got building work going on or lacking um you know computer equipment or your child shares a bedroom you know talk to us contact us uh, and we will try and um you know obviously we can't give you a house with an extra bedroom but you know talk to us we might be able to provide it equipment or we we'll just think about other possible solutions um you know help your child plan and please please keep an eye on parent mail um because you know there is stuff uh, coming through thick and fast. Um, in terms of COVID absence, at this stage, we've had no positive cases um, back to school, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, there is the possibility that year 11s and 13s, you know, may get a positive COVID. We might have to track and trace and send people home. Uh, what JCQ has said is that there, there is provision for this. They understand this might happen. Um, and if a child does have to miss 10 days of schooling, for example, because of that, Obviously, we'll provide remote learning, um, but we're actually allowed to make a special case for those pupils. So don't stress the most important thing if your child does have COVID-19 or symptoms or your families that you follow the guidance about staying at home, um, even though I'm sure it would cause you anxiety. So please don't sneak them into school um, if they've got symptoms um, because you're concerned about exams. There is provision for that um, in the process. Um, OK, so just looking at um, uh, sort of what JCQ say, uh, they say that the grade should represent a holistic and objective uh, judgment based on student performance in each subject. Um, so what teachers are instructed to do is consider what's been taught. And of course, the whole course hasn't been taught. Um, collect the evidence, evaluate the evidence. You know, is it good enough? Does it show our students at their best? Is it equitable and fair? Is it appropriate for all students? and then assign a grade. And again, I'll show you the timeline uh, for doing that in a moment. The final grade that we submit is based on performance and evidence produced by students. It's not uh, how they could have done if things hadn't been as they were. It's not, uh, oh, well, yeah, they've had a bad year, but actually yeah, I do know they could do that. It's actually about the evidence, um, you know, and I think that that's something that, you know, was very different last year because it wasn't a particularly well thought out system. Um, but this year it is evidence based. So that is why and you'll see on the timeline now, that is why what happens now, right now, between now and half term is absolutely crucial. Decisions have not yet been made because we haven't yet collected all of that evidence. So if you look at the timeline, um, you can see that from the 24th of March, 
every single piece of work that we are using as part of our evidence has to be available. Um, and at any point, um, JCQ, after we've submitted the grades, could say to us, right, I want to see student one in English, student six in, and we will have to produce that evidence so they can match that up. Prior to the 24th of March this year, they don't need to see the evidence. They just need to see evidence of mark sheets or teachers' records. Um, but we are expected, we will be expected at random to produce evidence and submit it within 24 hours when we're asked to do that, just to check um, you know, the fairness of the system. So between now and the 14th of May, mm -hmm. and basically what's been going on all term, is there are assessments going on in class. Um, and there are some days... Uh, they're called non-examined assessment days. So, for example, food tech have just had three days where the pupils have been doing their practical. Um, some schools actually have left the practical and said, no, we're not going to do it. We're just going to do written work. Um, here, we're really trying to give our students the ability to, to you know, to present themselves in, in the best light. Um, and they've done some amazing work there. Um, so um, there will be some more NEA days. Um, and Miss Tobai will talk about that. A little bit more in a moment but obviously we don't want to do too many of them because if you're in a food tech exam you're not sitting in an english classroom um and so we've got to balance it really carefully to make sure that pupils have opportunities in all subjects but don't take away from planned um assessments we've also got um eid coming up um and eid is potentially uh, a lot of children will be off and teachers on the 12th 13th and 14th so we have said to um staff that actually putting assessments on those days is not going to be particularly beneficial to the whole year group because at the moment we don't know which children will be off on what days um and then the 17th of may week beginning the 17th of may there is going to be another short mock series and it's not every subject that wants a mock exam but there are some subjects that really feel that they need that evidence base of students doing it under exam conditions to um, be part of the range of evidence because some pupils perform better in exam conditions some pupils perform better in class so we've got to try and be fair and equitable to everybody and in a moment um, Mr Bayer will talk you through what that mock timetable looks like um, and we'll get that out to you um, later in the week. We then have half term and you can kind of all breathe a bit of a sigh of relief. Um, but between the 7th and the 18th of June, um, I am going to be very busy having long meetings with every head of department. And those are the meetings where they basically come. Uh, I will say to them in advance, I want to see 10 portfolios of evidence um, and I will have a very rigorous meeting with them where I challenge. Um, and part of that meeting will be looking at how those subjects have performed over previous years looking at the target grades for pupils based on their key stage two or year 11 data, depending if they're year 11 or 13, and seeing if actually it fits a pattern. Um, we are an improving school. Um, we have, you know, as you know, worked incredibly hard to ensure that um, we're improving outcomes for pupils. So I will expect results to be better than they have been previously. Um, so although, you know, it, it would be abnormal if something suddenly went up by, you know, 50%, um uh, you know grade nines that would be be crazy um but we you know we are aware i'm not just going to say well we have to fit the pattern of previous years because we are actually improving school and i then have to submit that narrative to um jcq to explain why hopefully of course i haven't seen any grades yet but hopefully you know the, the school is um on the up um, between the 7th and the 18th, uh, as I say, I'll be busy doing that, having those very robust meetings with teachers. And then on the 18th of June, I have to sign it off. That's it. Process finished. However, your children need to be available between the 7th and 18th of June because there may be further NEA days. And again, we'll talk you through the sort of proposed timetable at the moment. So, for example, let's take art. Um, you know, the quality of artwork um, and the level of artwork produced does mean that students um, in a normal year would have um, periods of time, two, three days in the art exam um, where they have that time and space to produce their portfolio. It might be that those days have to take place after half term between the 7th and the 18th, because again, when you count in Eid and the mocks um, and pulling people out of classes means we're running out of time um, for assessment. And again, we hope to get that out for you this week. I mean, it should be fine because nobody's doing perhaps what they normally do and going off to uh, lovely summer holidays everywhere because we're not, uh, you know, we, we know that we 
we haven't been able to plan um, for that um, in, in advance. But you do need to be aware of that. And then the dates at the bottom, um, any student that's intending on staying on for sixth form here, um, we would expect uh, you to be taking part in a two week study programme beginning the 28th of May. We expect all pupils that are staying on um, to attend that. Um, we've not been given any guidance from the government about um, official leaving dates for year 11 and 13. I've been working on the assumption, along with all the other secondary heads in Waltham Forest, that the kind of most students go at half term and then we have um, you know, some catch up days and then most schools um, are also doing a sort of pre-sixth form thing. And that's basically because children will not get through the sixth form in year 11 if they are, you know, they've had such a, a, a checkered year that if we don't kind of refocus children um, for two weeks, do some team building, do some subject preparation, um, they will really struggle with those A-level and BTEC courses. So we've really got to focus them and there will be an expectation that they do some preparation work over the summer because, you know, whatever has happened over the last two years, you know, A-levels are not going to change. They're going to get back to normal. Um, there will be exams in, in two years time, um, you know, unless anything goes seriously wrong. And we've got to prepare our students um, in the best way that we can. And that gap is just way too long after half term and, and, and starting back um, in September in year 13. Um, and then enrollment that says may enrollment will take place on the 12th of august um and the results days are the 10th of august for a level and btec uh, and then the 12th of august for GT gcse uh, and btec it's much much earlier than normal um as you know gcse's normally come much later than that and we want to get the enrollment done straight away um immediately after that so we would expect all heathcote people staying on in the sixth form um get your results do your enrollment um you're ready to go for the sixth form and then go off and enjoy the last um, few weeks of your holiday um, and hopefully be able to go and have a holiday. So I am going to uh, just talk through the kind of evidence that we um, will be um, looking at. And basically uh, the evidence, and you've probably had this dialogue already with your children, but basically the evidence could be, I'm not gonna read them all to you, um, but past papers, um, mock exams, internal tests. Um, I have said to staff very clearly, um, please try not to use homework tasks um, for obvious reasons. One, we can't monitor what's happening in homework. You are allowed to use them. And also it puts certain students at a disadvantage. Um, you know, if you're sharing a bedroom with somebody or you just don't have the facilities at home that some of the other pupils do, I don't want to further disadvantage disadvantaged pupils. Um, so that has been um, really the, the mood of Heathcote is please try not to use homework. You know, use it for, um, you know, trials, but actually not for stuff that's submitted um, as evidence. So I'm just going to hand over to Laura, who's going to talk you through um, what departments um, are, are basically doing at the moment. I will just say before that, that we have had a couple of year 11s today, and I know some year 13s have expressed um, a bit of concern that um, we that some days they might have I don't know, four tests in a day because all the teachers are desperate to collect evidence on that day. It's <laughs> way too complicated to be able to map every single um, assessment because some teachers are doing you know, 20 minute questions. It's just an impossible task with the lateness of the guidance that came out from the government. So I'm going to be saying to heads of departments tomorrow, you've got to make sure that you give at least 48 hours notice of any test or assessment. Um, and then actually, if a student does feel overwhelmed, um, you know, they can actually just perhaps say to that teacher, someone needs to say, actually, look, I've got three on that day. And I know some of the year 13 pupils have been doing that and some adjustments have been made. So, yes, it would be lovely if we could have we could track and map every single thing that year 11 are doing is just too complicated and also you know teachers might change because they might do a, a 20 minute question in history and actually it didn't go particularly well and then they'd want to add another one so again it's about um, pupils being proactive and us as a school just listening to what the students are saying um and intervening if, if we feel that there's too much pressure there hello good evening everyone um, a lot of what I will talk to you really echoes uh, what Miss Hillman's just gone through. So I'll, I'll keep it relatively brief. Um, and hopefully you can see on the screen a sample of what the heads of departments have been asked to produce, something called what we're referring to as an APP document, an assessment procedures and planning document. Um, and as you can see, it sort of feels in everything that we're telling you that 
exams haven't really been cancelled. You know, there's this big announcement, exams are cancelled, and here we are doing a presentation about all the assessments and tests that you're still doing and that homework is not as advised. And it might seem that actually this is exams in a, in a different form. Uh, and I appreciate that causes a lot of stress. However, if you look at this APP uh, example, it's not from Heathcote, it's, it's an exemplar one. You'll see uh, that maybe in the first week, uh, the, the assessment, the test, the exam is actually just a four mark question uh, and followed up by a 12 marker. Now, in a normal exam year, you'd be going into an entire paper unseen. Uh, you'd have no idea what topics would come up, up the breadth of the course. Uh, and we'd just fingers crossed that you'd revise that topic and you'd, you'd get the good answers. In this scenario with our APP document, we are really signposting and guiding step by step to students what's coming up and when. So they know exactly which topics within the specification to revise and we're breaking it down so they're doing one question type often at a time. And we hope that that really builds uh, the ability to revise and prepare thoroughly and carefully with their teachers and get that support. Uh, and then later on, if we need those bigger unseen mock papers, they'll be coming later on from the 17th of uh, May. So you can see that there's opportunity in between those uh, examples here in blue. Uh, there's revision lessons, there's uh, exam technique, there might be interventions happening after school, there might be other uh, ways that pupils can prepare so they feel really confident. So I know quite often we're talking a lot about uh, exams and tests and assessments, but hopefully this shows you there has been a lot of consideration about the gaps in evidence that we feel we need uh, and that we're preparing students with us uh, so it, it isn't uh, a normal exam season as we'd usually get. So on the next slide, you can see that we talked about some supplementary mock exams. We've obviously put year 11 and 13 through that series of mock exams just before the Easter break. So in most cases, departments feel they've already got a really good evidence bank of mock exams. Um, but we might have a few examples where we need additional questions. Sometimes uh, GCSE and A-level papers are a lot longer and it's hard to fit in a, a really decent evidence bank in the constraints of lesson time when people are moving between lessons, particularly if there's additional uh, exam access arrangements for 25% extra time. So in certain cases, um, you'll see here in, in the core subjects in maths and community languages, English, uh, we've actually requested an additional mock series uh, and the dates are provisional here. There might be some changes to that. And as soon as we finalize the mock timetable, we'll send that out, uh, make sure that we are accommodating that with other lessons and in-class assessments too. And then finally, I think this really echoes what Ms. Hillman said, is around really those practical subjects, PE, art, music, drama, uh, where they it's really difficult if you're doing a performance, a recording, uh, videoing, uh, sports, and so on. That's really hard to get done within the timetable of an hour, hour and 20 minute lesson. Um, and so we've, we're potentially looking at um, the, the dates changing on some of these, maybe some of those will happen after the half term where we can have a, a full rehearsal opportunity or opportunity to look back at recordings for music performances or in PE, those practical activities. Um, Miss Algarakis is just going to jump in. Hello, just on, on what Laura just spoke about, I just want to add something that teachers have requested some dates, but obviously we were, we're aware that we may need to make some changes um, because of Eid. Um, obviously, you can probably see that a couple of those dates clash with these. So we're going to um, make some amendments before we send this out. Thank you. So that's that's it in terms of um, for, from me. And I would just echo again the, the year 13 um, pupils who've spoken to me. I think we have in most cases found some some good alternatives um, to, to when we can book those assessments in. And um, as year 13s are only doing three subjects, they do have independent study periods uh, and we have been able to accommodate some extra slots for um, timed exam practice in, in those areas, too. So we are trying to work through this together. And I think that does. Um, highlight that there are some differences to a normal exam year, even though I know there is a, a lot of significant pressure every week. So just hang in there, keep working hard and, and you're doing all of the right things and we're working with you to get the best possible evidence. Thank you. OK, so sort of coming to an end here and, and finishing up, um, just to let you know about access arrangements for children with special educational needs who have access arrangements such as readers, extra time, writers. Um, we are uh, teachers are working very closely with the SEN department to make sure that when they're doing assessments that might be submitted, um, that they that uh, students have the capacity to do that. If a student again feels that um, you know that's not happening for them, they need to let somebody know, either the teaching assistant or the teacher, um, and, and just you know have that dialogue. Um, 
you know, whilst we really try and be acutely organised here um, and give people plenty of notice, um, you know, this is a new system for everybody. And as you know, that you know, the information didn't come out till um, the Easter holidays, and there's more information coming out every second. So, as I say, we're still waiting for guidance on how many pieces of evidence. Um, there was a whole lot of evidence, a video made by one of the exam boards today for heads of department, which is great. Um, but you know, we've only got four weeks left four and a bit weeks left so um you know we are trying to be super organized but some of it um we just have to make the best judgments that we can um so how will quality um assure your work um so basically uh, we are using internal and external quality assurance so whilst i trust my teachers implicitly um you know this is a really really important process so every single department has to moderate at least one piece of work with another school uh, those schools are either in Waltham Forest or further afield. We've made that compulsory and I will expect to see evidence of that when I sign the grades off, just so that we're clear that we are awarding in line with other schools. Um, and, and basically, um, you know, we are we are putting into place other quality assurance, which I'll talk you through in a, in a moment. Um, just a note about appeals. So um, it, it wouldn't be a normal process where we would um, appeal some of the grades ourselves. If there were exams and we felt that there was a grade that was wrong, the school puts in a number of appeals and we sometimes put appeals in on behalf of parents that pay. Um, the nor it's not a normal appeal process this year. And the only way that you can appeal, assuming that JCQ sign everything off, sign off my centre policy, sign off all of that, is if um, it's about a mistake. Um, so if a student feels a mistake has been made and the first people they would approach is the school. So if you get your grades, um, you know, and you feel that they're wrong, you would approach us first. We would go back and double check. And, you know, hopefully we won't be making any mistakes because our process will be very robust. But, you know, things do happen. Um, and we would then do that appeal um, on behalf um, of you. Um, I don't envisage any other appeals around that. Um, you know, because as I say, our processes, I believe, are, are robust. Um, you know, we've sent you out reports today, and although they don't give you projected grades, they give you a very clear indication about whereabouts your child is working and whether they're on track um, to achieve that. That might not happen. Um, you know, things, things might not go quite as planned for the student. Um, but yeah, I don't envisage a lot of appeals um, outside of that. So in terms of making sure we're fair and equitable, um, every single member of staff in the school by the 5th of May will have undergone unconscious bias training. Um, and essentially that's uh, around about, uh, you know, making sure that we don't uh, make decisions judged on our own internal biases. So, for example, a typical example of that might be that, um, you know, you judge a student's work uh, as less good if the handwriting is poor. Um, and so really needing to consider all of those things to make sure that everybody has a, a, a fair chance. I've already explained, explained to you as well as internal moderation. We're moderating with at least one other school per department. Um, constant checking with line managers. My senior leadership team are constantly talking to departments and checking that they're OK, they're on track. Um, making sure that all staff re read any of the release documentation which is coming out sort of thick and fast. Um, I'm constantly in contact with other head teachers in the borough. We have a very um, prolific WhatsApp group, which is always going off with people saying, oh, what are you doing about this? And so we really are being collegiate. Um, and also we will be, as I said before, comparing the pattern of this year to previous grades. Um, and like I say, whilst we would be expecting to see some similarities, I am hoping that there will also be levels of improvement. Um, now, obviously, we don't quite know the impact of the pandemic, but, you know, you know, I hope that we are on a, a school that is in a journey of, of improvement. So I would expect to see um, those figures being, being on a trajectory of improvement from previous years. So just in summary, um, this is a slide um, that just sort of summarises. So on the left, working out your grade. Um, that's what we're doing at the moment. And we will do up until the 18th of June. Uh, I've talked to you about what the evidence is um, and then um, appeal. But appeals don't go to the exam boards. They come to us. And the idea is, is that we would do that in partnership. I don't see that being a, a big thing. Um, and, and finally, I just sort of reiterate I know how hard it is. Um, I know how much I want my own daughter to succeed. Um, please, please don't get into dialogue with teachers about um, 
uh, about grades. Um, they, they just can't. They're not allowed to. Um, and I know none of you would do this, but, um, you know, no bribes, please, for anybody. Um, and also, you know, we really are trying to give your child the best um uh, you know, opportunities. And there might be, you know, you might have been disappointed by some reds and oranges on the re report. Um, you know, please, you know, approach us in a solution focused way and we will do everything we can to support your child. You know, I, I don't want to be sort of in conflict with anybody, pupil or parents, um, about your child's outcomes. We really want to work with you to make sure, you know, there's still over four weeks left plus the two weeks after half term, there is a lot of time to show that evidence. And I've been having some great conversations with year 11s on the lunch queue, you know, who are telling me the grades that they got and how proud that they are, um, you know, but also understanding that, yes, they might have got a seven on one question, but actually there's a, there's a lot of other evidence as well. So they seem to have a good understanding of it. And both year 11 and year 13 have had a similar assembly um, to this um, this week. Uh, final thing from me uh, before I hand over to Miss Lewis and Miss Key Rose, who just want to finish up. Um, in terms of retakes, um, they haven't given clear details about the retake programme, um, but there will be an opportunity subject to COVID and getting out of it um, for pupils to retake exams um, in the uh, summer term, uh, sorry, the, in the autumn term. Um, I think we sort of said this in a previous meeting that we only had two pupils who chose to do this last year. Um, after the centre assessed grades, uh, one didn't turn up and one achieved the same grade. So I think if you are disappointed with your grades, um, you know, now's the time to react. I don't think there's an awful lot to be said necessarily for um, going through the effort of, of retaking an exam um, in, in September, unless there are exceptional circumstances, um, you know, A, because most of you will be on to the next pathway of your of your life in terms of university or apprenticeships or, or year 12, and you really don't want to be distracted um, from that. But I, I just don't think, you know, like I say, I, I hope that we will be conducting the process in such a way that there won't be, you know, people won't be particularly disappointed because they, you know, you've had the information from us about how your child's working. Um, so hopefully there won't be appeals, but it uh, retakes. But again, we'll, you know, we'll talk to you about it if you feel that that's appropriate for your child. Okay, so that's it from me. I really do appreciate you being here. Um, as I say, if anybody, I'm going to hand over to Miss Key Rose and, and Miss Lewis. Um, who want to uh, talk about something very positive. Um, if we just change the last slide, Miss. Um, if anybody's got any chat uh, questions, if they just want to um, type it in the chat, or if anybody wants to ask a verbal question, um, could you just type in the chat, please can I ask a verbal question, and we'll unmute you and we can have that dialogue. Otherwise, um, thank you for everything that you've done. It's been a, a hell of a two years. Um, some of you are coming to the end of your school life, some of you um, the end of year 11. Keep doing what you're doing. The fact that you're here is hugely important. Please keep supporting your children. Contact us if you need to. Um, you know, we I, I commit to you that we will do everything we can to make the process fair and robust. Um, you know, and it's and it's been a journey and um, we're coming to the end of it. But, you're, you're, you know, your children on the whole have been amazing, um, as have you. So, Thank you. Um, and um, we will keep going. Any other questions, please let us know. So I'm going to hand over to, I think, Miss Key Rose first. Let's do it in chronological order. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, so, yeah, it is uh, something positive. It depends how you view that because it's, it's also uh, going to be an expense, I imagine, for some parents. Uh, we have managed to book the prom in today and the date for that will be the 21st of July so it's uh, the final week of school we broke up on the Friday obviously year 11s will have broken up uh, quite a bit before that um, tomorrow I'll be speaking to the finance department and they will set up a payment plan um, but it's very likely that the price for that will be £40 uh, to include the venue DJ um, security and so on um, so it'll be great uh, if we can get lots of students to attend. We did do a survey recently and I think we had a hundred uh, who responded and said they would like to attend. So uh, fingers crossed that happens, uh, but it's likely the first payment will be for £10 uh, to secure that booking and that will be due by next Friday. Um, so yeah, watch this space and um, hopefully uh, we'll get lots of people there. It'll be something to enjoy, particularly after the last couple of years that we've had, or the year that we've had. Thanks. I'll pass over to Miss Lewis. 
Thank you, Miss Key Rose. Good evening, all. Um, similarly, we're trying to um, make the end of this year 13 journey as fun and enjoyable as possible. Um, so, we've, like uh, Miss Key Rose says, we've been um, talking with students and finding out what it is they want. Um, and one of the things they raised is that they would like to purchase um, Leavers hoodies, um, that says class of 21. Um, so, we've organised that payment and the link for um, buying those jumpers will be available hopefully by Friday. Um, we spoke with Speed Stitch and they have um, got a nice prototype um, in the pipeline so that should be available to order um, by Friday. Um, on top of that we'd like to invite all students um, and they are aware of this to an afternoon tea on the 10th of June. Um, and we know that students obviously will hopefully be fully done by then um, and are due to leave us on the 28th of May um, so we would like to invite them in the week after half term for an afternoon tea. And then following that on the Friday, um, we're organising a trip to Fort Park. Um, students, once again, um, can, once we get the link ready for that, we'll be able to pay for that. Um, we're trying to reduce the cost as much as possible, um, but we are conscious that we have to organise travel and the ticket prices um, as well. So we're looking at a price of around £25 to £28 for that visit. Um, I know students are really conscious about the time that we leave, so we're trying to um, maybe make that a longer evening so we leave um, at closing at five o'clock. So all that Im information has been shared with students during tutorial this week and we'll make sure that on parent mail we send links um, for payments as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Miss Lewis and Miss Key Rose. Um, uh, so just a question we've got. Um, Thank you, Liam's family. You're completely on the ball tonight um, after saving us at the beginning of the meeting. Um, it's a very good question. Um, kind of the question is, do we organise meetings with individual teachers or do we go through the head of year about the reports? Um, I think it depends on whether or not it's a kind of sea of red and orange and you've got some sort of concerns generally, um, you know, and about perhaps, you know, uh, attendance, intervention, things like that. I would say the head of year. Um, and if it is specifically um, about progress in one subject um, through the subject teacher or via the head of department. And I believe Ms. Argyrakis um, had the uh, added the heads of department emails to the report. Um, so anything else you want to say, Ms. Kiros? But I think, uh, Ms. Lewis, that's what I would say there. Yeah, I would just reiterate that. And I, I would say, you know, even if it's across two uh, subjects or three subjects, often, you know, it, it, I will I will be, you know, passing on your message because I won't always be able to answer those questions. So it probably is better to speak to the head of department uh, in most cases at this stage. OK, so any difficulties with that? If you can't get hold of the people that you need to, um, you know where we are. Um, contact um, any one of us in that team um, and, and we will support you. Um, so thanks again for being there. Um, as I say, very best of luck um, with the process. Keep doing what you're doing. Um, and as I say, this will be recorded and on the website if you want to listen to it again at any point, which I'm sure you didn't because you were a very, a very quiet and good audience. Have a lovely evening. Um, take care and look forward to being able to see you again uh, in person over the next uh, year or so, those of you who are staying on in the sixth form uh, and on results day, hopefully too. Thanks very much. Good night.